want to. Our entertainers are looked at as our leaders in the black community. The rappers, the dope boys, only leading our people further and further into destruction. You know what we need to look at and be like? We need to figure out what Christ has ordained for us. That's it, because if we can look at the Bible and say, damn, Christ said that his people was gonna go into slavery on ships, and that happened, we would be a fool to think that the rest of the Bible is not gonna to come to pass. All right, read that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. And now Israel. And now Israel. Miss uh, Maryland. Maryland. Harvey. Harvey, you people who now know that you're Israelites, read. What do the Lord thy God require of thee? What does God require of us? How do we get out of these curses? What is the solution to our problem? Read. But to fear the Lord thy God. Meaning you have to fear his judgments. Slavery was a judgment for not listening. Having our children taken from us and sold up the river to Master Charles, the next plantation over, that was a judgment for not listening. We have to understand that God is not playing with us. He's not playing with us. That's why we've been there, and that's why we stuck in the same position that we are now. All right, read. To walk in all his ways. Walk in the ways of the Bible. Read. And to love him. Love him. Miss Maryland, do you feel, Do you love God? Do you love God, bro? What's up? You love God? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so look, you already know, but stick around. We love God. We say we love God. Give me um Luke 6 and 46. Go there real quick. We say we love God, but there's action required from that. You know what we like to do? We go to the Christian church, we jump up and down, scream hallelujah, roll on the floor, foam in the mouth, and then do and then we don't remember or do anything that we learned if we learned anything in the church. Watch what the Bible said. Read that. The book of Luke, chapter 6 and verse 46. Uh-huh. And why call ye me Lord? And, and this is red. In the Bible, what's it mean when the letters are red? Are These are Jesus' words. He said, why y'all calling me Lord? Read. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, uh -huh. and do not the things which I say? But y'all don't do a damn thing the Bible says. The Christian church does not teach anything that the Bible says. We are here to teach you to repent. You're looking at the prophets. These are the true prophets who are telling you to keep God's laws. That's right. All these men you see up here is keeping the laws to the best of our ability. Right. We raise our families according to this. We raise our children according to this. Really? All right. So back to Deuteronomy 10 and 12. So we have to fear the Lord. We have to love him, which is to keep his commandments. That is the whole duty of men in the book of Ecclesiastes. It says the whole duty of men is to, uh, excuse me, the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep the commandments. That's right. right. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. Uh -huh. And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? Uh -huh. But to fear the Lord thy God. The, his judgments, read. To walk in all his ways. Uh -huh. And to love him. And to love him. And to serve the Lord thy God uh -huh. with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Read on. To keep the commandments of the Lord. To keep the commandments of the Lord. So now, let's get a quiz going real quick. Why did the curses come upon us? Why did the curses come on the Israelites for what? Because we didn't keep the commandments. So the solution to the problem is to keep the commandments. Right, so now right. let's get to some commandments, all right? Give me uh, Exodus 20 and 8. Do you know what today is? Sabbath, right? Saturday. You already know. How you know? Have you heard that before, bro? Heard, the Sabbath is on Saturday, the seventh day of the month, Miss Marilyn. Week, Not week, Sunday. Week. On, excuse me. Yeah, the seventh day of the week. All praises. When we look at the calendar, what day of the what day starts the beginning of the week? Sunday. Sunday. How is Sunday the first day of the week and the seventh day of the week? Right. That don't make sense. We've been lied to. We've been keeping the traditions of men. Right. The Christian church today does not teach and preach this Bible in its entirety. All right, read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 8. Come on. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day. You know why he had to say remember, bro? Because he knew we would forget. So now he's saying remember yourselves as an Israelite and remember the Sabbath day, which is Saturday, not Sunday. All right, read. read. To keep it holy. Holy means separate. This is supposed to be a separate day than all the other days of the week. That's it's right. about to explain it now. Watch this. Read. Six days shalt thy labor and do all thy work. Six days. You have six days from Sunday to Friday at sundown. You have six days to complete all your work, to cook, any of those things. Let me finish this. I'm going to get to you, bro. Read on. 
But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. The, la the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. What you got, bro? I was going to ask, like, how does he feel about working on... My big dog know what? when we used to have to work on Saturdays. Like, how do you feel about that? Okay, okay, okay. Go to uh, 1 Timothy 5 and 8. So, remember what I said earlier. Yet this day, we are still in what? Our... Captivity. captivity we're still in captivity right now so what i'm telling you is to keep the commandments to the best of your ability That's now right. that don't mean if you work on saturday to just uh you know i work on saturday man it is what it is no you're supposed to do your due diligence ask your boss this is a recognition of my faith i need this day off well, that we have a letterhead online you can print off saying that this is part of your faith that you can try and request and get the Sabbath day off because of this. Watch what the Bible says. Y'all got kids. You said you do. You got kids, bro? Step kids. Step kids. Okay, watch this. Read. First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8. Uh -huh. But if any provide not for his own. If a man provides not for his own, for his house, for his children. Read. And specifically for those of his own house. Uh-huh. He have denied the faith. God said you denied the faith. You don't believe in me if you're not taking care of your family. So what I'm telling you is, it would be who of you, it would be your best interest to start inquiring with your boss how you can get that day off. Guess what? You might be able to get every other Sabbath day off. Something that shows fruit of repentance. Right. You're trying right. your hardest to keep God's Sabbath day. Right. And guess what? Later on down the line, you might want to start thinking, hmm, let me start figuring out another opportunity for me to uh, get a job or a career path why I don't have to work the Sabbath day. All right? So that's how you... What was that? Uh, 1 Timothy 5 and, five eight. and 8. 1 Timothy... It's a man's duty to provide for his own. That's for right. his household. So now, on the Sabbath day, we know that we can't work or buy today. Guess what else we can't do? Give me uh, Exodus 35 and 3. You know what that is. Guess what else we can't do on the Sabbath day? It's all right. We're going to show you. Are you married? Can't eat. Uh, you engaged? Okay, okay. Well, the Bible says let all things be done in writing, right? So, sex is only for marriage. That's and right. the Bible is called fornication. So, guess what? Remember, the laws and commandments we're supposed to keep? That's one of them the so-called black man loves to break. He loves to fornicate. He loves to be an adulterer, chase the next man's wife. Guess what, bro? This ain't me. It's the Bible. These are things you're going to be judged by. Right. You will not get the kingdom for fornicating, brother. That's All right? right? So read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 35, and verse 3. Come on. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout. Go ahead. Throughout your habitation. It said, ye shall kindle no fire. So guess what? In Jerusalem at night, it got cold. They had fires. They were trying to keep warm. The priests, they burned incense. So what is this fire talking about that we're not to kindle on the Sabbath day? Sis, I know you don't know this, but you got to hear it too. Check it. Read it again from the top for everybody. Read. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. Ye shall kindle no fires on the Sabbath day, meaning we are not to cook on the Sabbath day. That's right. So believe it or not, that is a sin according to the Bible. Give me that in 1 John. So sis, this is just to edify you. Don't think that we bashing you, but our people got to learn these things, all right? Give me that, because it's the thing. We out here to edify. We've been beat up for too long. So now we out here to teach our people, brother, sister, come back to these commandments. You are royalty on the earth. You are the precious jewel of Christ and who's, uh, in the Bible who is a black man, the black Messiah. These are these things we want to cause you to remember. So watch this. What is sin, bro? And you too, Miss Marilyn, or you, bro. What's sin according to the Bible? Breaking the commandments. What? Breaking the commandments. Oh, praise. Let's give this brother a hand clap, man. Breaking the commandments is sin in the Bible. Because guess what? Something that I might think that is wrong to me might not be wrong to you. You might think it's okay. So we can't judge off what man thinks. We have to go with the Bible says. So read that, officer. The book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Come on. Whosoever committed sin uh -huh. transgresseth also the law. Means to break the law, the commandments. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the breaking of God's laws. That's right. Are they teaching us that in the, in the Christian church? 
No. No, they, now they ain't telling you to keep the Sabbath day, Miss Merlin. You didn't tell me that. So that's the Okay, so now we're beginning to understand what sin is, so we cannot do these things. So I have a question. Come on. There's a scripture in the Bible that says all unrighteousness is sin. All unrighteousness, all praises to the Most High. So let's get what righteousness is. Give me that in Deuteronomy 6 and 25. Because you're right, all unrighteousness is sin. So once again, we're going to see a common theme in this Bible, that everything revolves around the commandments, to love God is to yeah. keep the commandments. Yeah. To believe in God yeah. is to keep the commandments. Yeah. Let's see what how uh, righteousness is identified in the Bible. Read that, officer. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, and verse 25. Come on. It shall be our righteousness. It shall be our righteousness. That's very specific. The Israelites, says, it shall be our righteousness if what? If we observe to do all these commandments. If we observe to do all these commandments. That's what, that's what makes us righteous. So guess right. what? Breaking the sin, I mean, excuse me, breaking the Sabbath is a commandment, right, Miss Merlin? So if we break the Sabbath, we are committing on what? Unrighteousness. That's what it is. To keep the commandments is righteousness. It says the same thing in the New Testament. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Uh-huh. And it's profitable for doctrine. For doctrine. This is our doctrine. Not no Christianity, not Catholicism, not Muslim. That is garbage. This is the doctrine. This Bible. Read. For reproof. For correction. For correction. Uh -huh. For instruction in righteousness. Instruction in righteousness. This is our instruction. So now, you said about the sacrificing, right? Oh. You know, I want, uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Because look, in the Old Testament, if you sinned, you had to go get a goat. Or you had to get a lamb, or you had to get an ox or a dove, and you would have to take it to the priest, and you would have to sacrifice for forgiveness of your sins, all right? So watch this. Watch what the Bible say. Book of, book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 1. Come on. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. So the law in the Old Testament under Moses was a shadow of the good things to come. That shadow or representation being of Christ. So the law was a representation of Christ. But guess what? Under the law in the Old Testament, if you fornicated, bro, guess what happened to you? You was put to death. So, in the New Testament, under Christ, we're forgiven. Now watch this. Read. And not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers there unto perfect. So it said... The same sins we keep breaking, if all we have to do is go and get a bull or an animal and sacrifice it, and we keep doing it the same, oh, I sin, let me sacrifice a bull. Oh, I sin, let me sacrifice a sheep. We're not learning. We're still being wicked. So it's saying the blood of bulls cannot make you righteous. All right, read. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. Because then we wouldn't have to make those sin offerings. We would be righteous. Read. Because that the worshipers, once purged, should have had no more conscience of sins. Uh -huh. But in those sacrifices, there is remembrance again made of sins every year. Uh -huh. So now here's the point. Now jump to verse 7, officer. Watch this. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. Then said I, uh -huh. lo, lo read. I come in the volume of the book. This is Christ. Paul is prophesying in the spirit of Christ. He said, I come in the volume of the book. Read. It is written of me. Uh-huh. To do thy will, O God, uh -huh. above when he said, sacrifice and offerings. Sacrifices, uh, bringing an animal to the altar and sprinkling his blood. These things, read. And offerings for sin, uh -huh. thou wouldest not. Don't do that no more. Don't sacrifice no more. But have faith in Christ and keep the commandments. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we men repented at heart.
the scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.